Karan, thank you so much for joining me. So, uh, first question, how are box office collections doing overall? With, of course, including the spike from Bollywood in the last quarter. So, I think if you look at the box office collections, they've been robust over the last three months. Typically, I think with that English content, uh, you know, started off with that in the month of July. And August and September was all about Bollywood. If you look at broader numbers, where we are today, I think Hindi, we're seeing growth of anyway close to 40 to 45% versus pre-COVID levels. And the contribution for any box office in pre-COVID times was around 35 to 60% for the multiplexes. I think this is one of the first quarters in post-COVID era, wherein Hindi contribution moved towards a contribution of 60-odd percent. Even if Hollywood has seen strong growth to the tune of 25 to 30% because of higher ticket prices, movies like Mission Impact and YB. The usual content in this quarter has been kind of a laggard, but broadly, I think the numbers seem to be good. We are seeing growth of more than 20% as far as box office living is concerned, if you compare this to pre-COVID. It's a mix of both the things. It's led by ticket prices and footfalls. Right. So, slightly broader question, Karan. So, about a few months ago, maybe just before the Bollywood hits, that's Mission Impossible and Oppenheimer and all came, the whole industry was being written off, at least the exhibition part of it. So, have things turned around? And that's one. Secondly, what is the peak that we've ever seen in this space? So, for example, the figure that I have for just the Hindi part is about 1,700 crores for the last quarter. I don't have the Hollywood number, but I'm just trying to understand what is the peak, the biggest number that we've ever hit in a quarter for all exhibition, and then maybe we can look at how it is today. If you look at the peak from exhibition standpoint, we are currently at the peak. So yeah, I've got data, see, over the last seven to eight years in this broadly, and numbers have never surpassed more than 12 to 13 crores in any particular quarter. So you could say that, you know, July, August, September historically is the best July, August, September quarter that we were to have as far as these box office is concerned. Uh, one more very interesting trend in this quarter is that all these movies are Hindi franchise wave films. These are not even dub films. So that's part. And the question in terms of what has changed over the last three, four months, you know, what is looking so different and compelling is as in the nature of content. We have moved away from remakes. We have moved away from just, you know, remakes of Bollywood and regional films. We are making original films, IP led concepts. We are moving towards, uh, you know, franchise based concept films, which are more led by VFX and various effects, you know, which will drive audiences, which are winner at a last game like Jamal and Patak. So I think these are some three, four reasons in terms of what has changed over the last three to four months. I think the concerns for the industry still persist because I think we've been very fortunate that since the last three months, whatever large films that have come, either the star rate or the large have come, they have all been successful consecutively. I think it's a tough ask for this kind of momentum to continue forever. You will require support from small medium budget content, which is currently not happening. And uh, we are kind of piggybacking, you know, in a very big manner towards large budget films. And these films contribute anyway to 85% of box office today. Right. Would you have a number for aggregate? I mean, all motion picture as viewed in cinema halls across India in a quarter, roughly? Yeah. So aggregate numbers in terms of gross box office across genres, the numbers have been in the range of 12 to 14 thousand crores, including your GST or entertainment tax must buy. This number generally has been growing in the range of 7 to 8 percent. And this time around, I think you will see strong growth because the numbers have been very compelling. But on an annualized basis, 10 to 15 percent because the first half, you know, was quite muted as far as cinema is concerned. The first half of the calendar year that was quite muted. It's the second half of this quarter is good. Next quarter is also looking reasonably okay. So on a full year basis, the growth is not more than 15%. Let's look ahead. You know, one of the things that you pointed out in a note that you've just put out is this new pricing strategy from PBR Inox, where they're saying that you pay 699 rupees and you can come and watch a movie 10 times a month on non-peak days or basically not on weekends. Is that something that's going to fly before we come to the economics of it? It's a very good plan that they've introduced and see sort of permanent plan. We have clearly mentioned that this plan is only for 20,000 customers for now. And 20,000 customers means it's a very small fraction of your overall footfall, which is a very large number. It's not even 0.1%. So there's no impact of this as such if it's only for a specific number of customers. Our dependence on large budget flips have increased consistently. Small, medium budget content is not coming in large number in terms of footfalls. They really want to get the footfalls back on track on a consistent basis. We have seen this earlier as well that last year, the one quarter reported a very strong performance and the other two quarters are very weak. And uh, they want to drive that footfall consistently and that's why they're doing this. And I think in terms of potential, I think this is a good thing because 
this is not going to lead to any increased investments. It's more of asset sweating. So I think from that, it really makes sense. It's a good promotion strategy. But the positive impact of this will come only if people do come in large numbers, only if the content also improves. And only if this is extended to more than 20,000 customers. And of course, people come and eat popcorn and drink cold drinks and so on. So it's interesting because you said 17% on weekdays, but even on weekends, from your report, it's 41%, which is an average. I'm sure for big movies, it fills up completely. It seems to be a tricky business. So what's your outlook for the next three to six months? I think you've already given us a sense that it is going to be tough to maintain this momentum. But anything else that you're expecting or looking out for as we go towards the end of the calendar? I think the October, November, December quarter will be rather muted because the Hollywood content, the flow is coming slowly now because of the Hollywood the strike which is there of the street writers over there. So that's one problem which is there. Secondly, in terms of provisional, it's been a selective approach. Jader has done well. And before Jader, we saw all the visual things not doing that well. So Reason has been quite selective and volatile. And within Hindi, you are going to piggyback you know, on Dunkey, Extra Tiger Part 3 for the performance in terms of how things move over the particular quarter. So it's a short, short thing that this quarter will not be as competing as the July, August, September quarter. But definitely, even if we are able to kind of move towards 80-90% of pre-COVID levels as far as overall box office is concerned, I think that's going to be a good sign. And nonetheless, I think the end, I would put it this way that, you know, things are improving for the better. As far as content is concerned, the worst uh, seems to be over. Now we are trying to make differentiated content. Whether or not it fits for the audience, that's a separate thing altogether. But things are definitely on the verge of an improvement. Karan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.